this evening, I will perform and provide an analysis of Norman de la Joya's variations and capricia using elements of Krebsian analysis. Contemporary composition entails diverse approaches and is strongly influenced by modernist principles of the 20th century. Roy Francoli's categorization of contemporary music, contemporary composition may be categorized variously. According to Roy Francoli, contemporary music can be categorized as extension of modernistic aesthetic, challenges and reinterprets older categories of music, innovates new ways of organizing and approaching harmonic, melodic, sonic, and rhythmic aspects of music, using tone centers, taking turns from tonal centers, changing established pulses, metric modulation, etc. Neo-romanticism slash neo-expressionism. Composers who anchor techniques from past periods of music to main subcategories. The first are neotonal, contrapuntal with a strong rhythmic profile. Composers in this group focus on tonality and pitch centricity. The second category features post romantic, expressionistic, atonality, or post tonality. These composers have highly chromatic and highly motivic compositions, which do not clearly reference tonal centers, very similar to free atonal music, post-minimalist and hybrid composition. According to Roy Francoli, this category incorporates Western concert tradition and either popular music or non-Western music influences and techniques. Notice that Sarinaco shows up in a few categories. This supports Roy Franklin's point that contemporary composition is both eclectic and pluralistic. Neoclassical composition. Neoclassicism in music was a 20th century trend, particularly kind of in the interwar period, in which composers sought to return to aesthetic precepts associated with the broadly defined concept of classism, namely order, balance, clarity, economy, and emotional restraint. Norman De La Joya, 1913-2008, was born in New York City to Italian parents a composer of chamber, chorale, and orchestral music. Della Gioia is well known for his chorale music and his use of traditional chants. Della Gioia won numerous awards for his compositions, many of which accompany a variety of opera, ballet, and other genre of theatrical presentation. Della Gioia's compositions are characterized by his juxtaposition of Italian Renaissance with jazzy rhythms and other textures. Fun facts. Della Gioia was a member of the musical family. He studied organ under his father. Della Gioia attended the Institute of Musical Art at the Juilliard Graduate School and later studied composition with Paul Hindemith. In 1957, Del Joyo received the Pulitzer Prize in Music for Meditation on Ecclesiastes for the String Orchestra. Variations and Capriccio is written for violin and piano. The piece follows the general spirit of Del Joyo's style, moving fluidly from one variation to the next. Variations and Capriccio sounds like it could easily accompany a contemporary play. Sometimes jazzy, sometimes contemporary, 
the later movements are distinct. The seeming simplicity of the piece, reflecting airiness and movement, the wise, the requirement for tactile agility, and sophisticated technical aptitude. This piece is atonal, highly chromatic, involves transformations of small motives. In addition, the pitch language uses whole tone symmetrical scales and mode 4 of Messiaen's modes of limited transposition. In fact, to my ear, Dojoy's piece suggests that this composer employed modernistic aesthetic whole tone symmetrical scales, uh, Oliver Messiaen mode 4, and also employs neo-romantic slash neo-expressionistic elements, atonal, chromatic, motivic transformations. I will provide analysis for variations 1 through 3 of and the Capriccio. To begin, I want to identify two compositional techniques that are pervasive in this piece, namely harmonic rhythm and registral accent. Harmonic rhythm. Harmonic rhythm observes the change in pitch. Registral accent. Registral accent occurs whenever there is movement <coughs> by leaps. For example, I observed the second note of the violin part in measure one and found that this note was emphasized with a harmonic rhythm accent. And the third note from this measure was emphasized with a registral accent. These two techniques are used throughout the piece at various points. To follow our scales extrapolated from variations one, two, three, and the capriccio. For each scale, after briefly discussing it, I will play it and the surrounding passage. In variation 1, I found that there is a fourth mode of limited transposition with a periodicity 4 slash 6 starting on E flat. I placed the first two notes for measure 1, added two notes for measure 2, two notes for measure 3, one note for measure 4, and two notes for measure 6 in the violin part. This scale is comprised of the notes E flat, B, C, E flat, E, F, F sharp, A flat, and B flat. Take a listen. This is how the scale sounds. <laughs> Thank 
second scale in variation two. This variation also contains the notes uh, of an A flat major scale found in measures 25 to 27. The notes B flat, A, G, C, and D flat are found in measure 25. E flat is found in measure 26. F and A flat are found in measure 27. In order, the notes read A flat, B, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, and A flat. Listen to the scale and its place in the surrounding passage. The Capriccio contains the notes of a D major scale in measures 23 and 24. Measure 23 contains the D natural. Measure 24 contains the notes C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, and E. In order, this is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Let me play three. shows the scales that I just played for you from variations 1, 2, 3, and the Capriccio. Here, you can see what the scales look like without their surrounding passages. Variations and Capriccio is replete with scales throughout. Delajoyo uses scales, the basic building blocks of music, to create elaborate complexities of sound. I will now play variations in Capriccio. Please enjoy. Listen attentively to see if my overview resonates with what you hear. Following my presentation, I will delve into an analysis of the piece. I invite your minds to the discussion. For now, please enjoy Village Joy's Variations in Capriccio.
Next, I would, employ, uh, I would like to employ uh, Krebs's framework for metrical analysis to observe uh, metrical dissonance in the six variations and decreasing for y one part of this piece. To discuss metrical dissonance, I want to start by explaining and exemplifying metrical consonants. Metrical consonance occurs when all layers of motion are lined up to their maximum and no interference is observed to occur between the layers of motion. An example would be if four quarter notes were played in a time signature of four slash four. This is because four notes per bar are to be played at quarter note values. And if four quarter notes are played in that bar, the you note know, values and beats per bar would match. Take a listen to this very familiar example of metrical consonants. As you can hear, 
Roberts is a pianist, musicologist, and professor of music theory, University of Victoria, Canada. Krebs' scholarly article, Fantasy Pieces, Metrical Dissonance in the Music of Robert Schumann, Oxford, 1999, has greatly contributed to the study of rhythm and meter in music theory, as well as the study of comparative literature, Germanic studies, music therapy, psychology, and music cognition. Cranston analysis and theories of meter are used to analyze early modern era to present day music in various musical styles and genres, such as jazz, bluegrass, rock, techno, and metal. I am calling the analysis technique Krebsian analysis to credit Arnold Krebs. As I use the style of metrical analysis, he applied to namely Schumann's along other composers' works in his career. In fantasy pieces, metrical distance in the music of Robert Schumann, Krebs develops an original theory of metrical conflict by adapting the concept of consonance and distance to metrical analysis. Krebs presents detailed descriptions of various types of metrical distances, a system of labels to characterize specific distances, explanations of musical processes that arise from the formation, manipulation, and resolution of these distances, and a discussion of the interaction of metrical distance with pitch structure, form, and extra musical elements. Krebs places emphasis on the description of the ever-changing metrical states within pieces of music and on the characterization of the metrical progressions formed by these changes in changing states. Krebsian analysis and theories of meter are used to analyze early modern to present day music, various musical styles and genres such as jazz, bluegrass, rock, techno, and that. I use Krebsian analysis to observe the rhythmic structure, including analysis of pulse and layer, among others. Krebsian analytic technique is an informing method for observing this piece because of the pieces seemingly metrical dissonant quality. I set out to examine key questions and areas of consideration. First, I am interested in whether the piece is generally metrically consonant or dissonant. In addition, I explore the types of dissonance that occur in this piece. Finally, I offer a brief discussion and description of the quality of dissonance in this piece. To follow, I will use aspects of Krebsian analysis technique to compare a non-metrical layer against pulse layer, beats per bar, or no value established temporarily in the measures of interest. This slide may look familiar. Variation 1 is more metrically constant than it is dissonant in the body of fire. The two types of dissonance occurring there most notably are D, displacement 8 plus 4, 1 equals 16th note, and G, grouping G, uh, 8 plus 7, 1 equals 16th note. Displacement dissonance is comprised of divisible groupings which displace the original pulse beat emphasis via accentuation or notable emphasis present in the given passage. D 8 plus 4, 1 equals 16. The D stands for displacement distance. The A represents the cardinality the grouping contains. The plus sign shows the movement emphasized is found later than the first beat in the measure. The 4 represents the number to count to after the first of the grouping, and 1 equals 16th note means that this displacement distance is counted.
counted using 16 bit. Grouping distance is comprised of non divisible groupings which superimpose a grouping against a pulse layer or another established anti metric layer. G8 plus 7 point 16 bit. G stands for grouping distance. 8 is the number of notes per grouping. Plus means after the first beat. 7 means the seventh note is articulated. And 1 equals 16th note means 16th notes are the note value this grouping is based on. This first variation had more dissonance, which occurred more sequentially when compared to the later movements, though it contains more consonants than dissonance ratio. Of the two dissonances, the G8 plus 7 when it was 16th note reoccurred more often than the D8 plus 4 when it was 16th note. This is variation 2. Variation 2 in the violin part is mostly consonant with very little obvious dissonance to be seen. One hard to spot instance of dissonance occurs as a D3 plus 1, 1 equals 8 note, occurring in measures 31 to 32. D equals displacement. 3 is how many beats are found per group, and plus 1 means that the beat emphasized is one beat after the first beat, and the eight notes are the note values found in the group. Another less obvious distance is seen in this variation as a G4 slash 3, 1 equals 8 note in measures 44 to 45. G equals group A distance, 4 is the number of pulses per grouping, and in this instance, the grouping is compared to the pulse layer, 3 eighth notes, and the B cardinality is at the rate of the notes. Also, it is worth noting that here the numbers have a slash because the two groupings are superimposed against one another instead of occurring in succession. Here we see variation. Variation 3 has four instances of a G4 slash 3 distance, 1 equals 16 note, occurring in measures 2, 4, 21, and 23. G stands for grouping dissonance, and in the case of these 4 slash 3 dissonances, the groupings are four groups of three 16 note groups which take up to two of the four beats per bar plus one sixteenth note from the third beat. The other metrical distance which shows up here is a D8 plus 1, 1 equals 8th note distance. D stands for displacement distance, 8 is the number of notes contained in the grouping, and a plus 1 means counting from the first beat that is emphasized. Counting one beat in the positive direction from the first beat means that the second beat is emphasized. And in this case, it is via registral accent, specifically by leap down uh, from the major third, from B natural to G natural. And eighth notes are note values found in this group. This is the Capriccio. The Capriccio has five G4 slash 3 1 plus 8 note distances, six G3 slash 2 1 equals 8 note distances, and two 
G3 slash 2, one of those quadrivalent dissonances. The 5G4 slash 3, one of those equal dissonances, occur in measures 15 to 16, 55 to 60, 56, 88 to 89, 133 to 134, and 154 to 155. The G stands for grouping dissonance. The 4 means there are four groupings. And the 3 is the number of beats contained in each grouping. And the 8th note is the note value found in each grouping. The 6, 3, slash 2, 1 equals 8 note dissonances occur in measures 43, 47, 117, 119, 123, and 168. The G stands for grouping dissonance. The 3 in this case refers to the number of beats per grouping, and the 2 tells the number of groupings. Two groups of 3 and the 8th notes are the type of that no value that note group. The reason the rules are correlated differently here is because the rests can be observed with two different perspectives. One, the grouping can be formed by observing the rests as part of the groupings, or two, the notes of the violin part which are omitted in the rest can be seen as being played as counter notes uh, being, uh, being played by the piano part. The two G three slash two one equals quarter note distances are found in measures 58, 59, 98. The G stands for grouping dissonance. The three means there are three groupings, and the two represents the number of beats found in each grouping, and the quarter note is the type of note value found in each grouping. While my study focuses on variations one, two, three, and capriccio, for completeness, I did cursory observations of four, five, and six. Briefly, variations four and six. Variation six can be uh, variation four can be considered consonant, as the amount of distance is less than subliminal at most. Similarly, variation six had no easily identifiable metrical distance and had less than subliminal metrical distance as well, as far as I can tell. Variation five contains five notable metrical distances. Two are G5 slash 3, one equals eight note distances. Two are G4 slash 3, one equals eight note. And one is a G3 slash 2, one equals eight note distance. The two G5 slash 3, one equals eight note distances occur in measures 22 to 23 and 32 to 33. The G means there's a grouping distance. The 5 in this case represents the number of groupings, and the 3 is the cardinality of notes found in each grouping. There are five groups of three note articulations, and the eighth note is the note value, value found in each grouping. The two G4 slash 3, 1 equals 8 note distances, occur in measures 24 to 25 and 34. The G stands for grouping dissonance. The four means there are four occurrences. The three means there are three notes per group, and the eighth note is the note value found in each grouping. The single G three slash two one equals eight note occurs in measure thirty-seven. The G stands for grouping dissonance. The three represents the number of groupings. The two tells how many notes are contained in each grouping, and the eighth note is a note that we found in each group. Here is my response to three key questions. First, though there are multiple sequential dissonances in the first variation, potentially leading one to believe there is, uh, this is a metrically dissonant piece at a quick glance, Dylan Joyo's variations and capriccio is more metrically consonant than it is metrically dissonant. 
The piece contains both improving as well as displacement metrical distance types. My observation of the quality of distance is that the G4 slash 3 is the most reoccurring dissonance, appearing a full 12 times across the variations. Finally, using the Protean analysis approach has been an intriguing perspective for examining this piece. While using Protean analysis ultimately does not necessarily inform about the piece's rhythmic structure characteristics, it provides insight into thematic rhythmic ideas and the connections. What did you hear? I used many more resources than you see here, though highlighting some of the keys that I've uh, led to my analysis. <laughs>